My name is Nuridin Tiamé. The name of our firm is Latria Global Investment Limited. We are located in Ecosphere, in Lagos. And we have another arm of our business, which is called the Amodese Aquaculture Nigeria Limited. They start wondering why we have two farms for fish farming. Uh, the first one is uh, a family-owned business, the Latia Global Investment. And we started that one 2005, officially, under the CAC. But we, we started it in 1995 for our culture. In 1997, we actually built our first pond on this farm. Uh, how did you even start that one? I'll give you a background story for that. While I was in, while I was in service in 1995 96 uh, I happened to travel to NTJ in Anambra State. I was serving in Benin. So I went to see a friend here. So now I saw that the landlord had a farm. And I said, oh, this is the farm with him. When they heard I was a farmer. My friends are farmer. So we went there. That was the first time I was seeing somebody growing catfish. <laughs> I was surprised because I'm from Ekwe. It was something strange to me. That somebody is raising catfish inside water. For me, catfish is just meant for us to do the water. Catfish. So I was I was a bit amazed. So when I got back to Lagos, that was the day one man came to this farm to carry chicken waste. And some of my dad's worker wanted to collect money from him. Apparently they were collecting money from any time he comes. So I said, Why are you collecting money from the man? He has come to pack waste. So, and I said, yes, for the boy you collect money from him again. So while the man was about going, I said, bros, come. What do you even do with this? And I said, he has a fish farm. Yeah, he said, not far from me. I said, okay, let's go together. <laughs> so that was the second time I was not seeing someone do fish farming physically. So I got interested. So in 97, we bought our first set of fingerlings from CHI. We got here. We got them to the farm. But before then, we had to take blocks from my dad's block. The block wanted to use to build his house. Okay. <laughs> so we actually took we wanted to build upstairs. So we had to take some of the blocks, blocks down to the farm here to build our first prototype pond. So we did second one so we now four points as a chemical engineer mine was to just do a lot of research work so in between those periods I had a younger brother I was working at Central mm -hmm. this they call it Anderson Consulting then so all he needed to do was for me for me for him to get me materials online internet was not very common then but for corporate bodies like that at that top level you could get the internet so you could get a lot of information to print out for me so some weekends i could have almost 200 pages to read to read on catfish so we started building interest started documenting doing the trials here the chemical engine it was a lot easier for me to do those things because of my training so then when we now started 2000 our first commercial pond now to beat six pounds because we are confident enough to so you can start this yes. thing so the remaining block for the upstairs we brought everything down to the cotton so that was what made my dad not able to do an upstairs they had to just roof downstairs in his new building so that was what better the first set of six pounds in year 2000 mm. and we started growing going till we got to 94 pounds it's not been so rosy. Challenges have been there, which I hope people learn from us because over the years we've shared our failures for people. 
good night. And we share that our success too. Well, good night to everybody that's full of years. Yeah, white tilapia. Uh, before we started tilapia in 2010, uh, I went for a training in Ghana, cage culture. Mm -hmm. Because why did you go to cage culture? Why were you looking at cage culture at that point in time? The cost of electricity, mm. change of water. Because for us, we are not having any natural water around us here. Okay. So we are, to, we are making it a bowl. So the cost of digging bowl, getting water out, depends on full time energy. Mm. So we are thinking, what are the alternatives? So that was what better the Amadeus agriculture. Mm. We're going to Cape Culture of Tilapia. So I went to Ghana in 2010, learned how to make cages. Practical course, one month training, but we didn't learn how to do tilapia fingernails. But I saw a snippet of what they were doing fingernails production there. So I came back to Nigeria, we started the cage culture, and we were still doing our catfish. We now found out that it was profitable doing catfish in cages in terms of your not running energy cost. Mm. Then the natural environment is just fitting. So that cost alone was something that ah, we are losing so much using energy to drive this catfish. And when catfish produce a lot of waste, you have to change your water regularly. Sure. So we started looking more at tilapia. For tilapia, they don't need so much protein in their feet. So the feed is less expensive. And for, for the market itself, for catfish, you are held down by the market women. <coughs> so but for tilapia, you can sell frozen, you can sell fresh. You don't need to sell tilapia life. Hmm. That's that the major difference between catfish and tilapia. Catfish. If you're going to eat eating fresh from it has to be so life. Yes. That's the unfortunate mentality we have. Nobody eat, eats live fish. That meat around the you know, coffee that you have to buy, you have to be fresh in what that is, made people lose out in terms of why don't we harvest and freeze and sell at our own pace? than using the place of the market women that will come buy yeah, at yeah. any price they want but because you are, either, you, are, you are at a disadvantage you are going to sell mm. but the more you keep them the more they eat and the less they convert for you sure. so you are not going to lose money so try to cut off so now they say no <clears throat> we are going to exit that's that's fish. business. So, It was not easy exiting. It took us almost four or five years for us to exit. So before we now made that exit, I went to Thailand 2015 to do proper training on tilapia finger production. So after my training, I came back to Nigeria, brought all my equipment, all my brew stock, then faced out catfish from the farm fully. Catfish is profitable, tilapia is profitable. But you need to know the model, mm. the system, the culture system you are going to use. Catfish is profitable today, tomorrow, anytime, even with the cost of the feed. But first and foremost, you understand the culture system that will make you profitable. Mm. <clears throat> you have to start looking at eating ponds. Or cage culture so that the most important dynamic after feed is energy to pump water hmm. you're able to cut that one off then catfish is very profitable then the next step you're looking at is 
marketing the catfish. When people say, oh, I'll give you, I'll give you statistics now. In Nigeria, our fish production is about a million metric tons, mm -hmm. both for captured fisheries, from aquaculture farms, not more than one million metric tons. But the fish need for the country, based on the FAO standard, we need four million metric tons. So you can see a huge gap of three million metric tons. The gap is huge. If you expect it, if you expect it, go to or the dollar to invest in fish farming, right? Sure. But they are not. Mm. Because the policies are not okay mm. for big players. Mm. So, what do you do as a small player? You have to create that market yourself. And say, okay, why do I need to produce cartridge and wait for the market to come and buy from me? So, you may decide. Do I really need to do five tons every month of catfish? Or do one ton, two tons every month for me to sell directly mm. to final consumers? How much is fish now, the frozen fish? The cost of Naira has gone up. Title is around 2,000 Naira. All this could be one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five. So, so what has one ton on his farm can easily sell at 1,005 per kilo directly to consumers, to consumers. than waiting for the market women to come, to come and buy. Mm. So you are more profitable working smartly in a small space than producing so much, waiting for the market women to come and buy at 1,002. Mm. But they are still going to make from, from it. So why don't you just create that marketing chain for yourself and okay, what are the things that you can use to market this fish? First is interest. You know say oh ah Mr. B is making so much money in this like that business. I want to go into it. You don't know what other business Mr. B is doing. <laughs> <laughs> If people look at me and say, oh, this is the man that he says to that beer, I do other things. Mm. I consult in agriculture, apart from fish farming. I do trainings. So, those are the general funds for me. But for people that want to come into tilapia, it's like itself. It's profitable, but like I said, the first thing is, Interest. Interest and that's the power. Hmm. So say, yes. This business is not a sprint race. It's a marathon race. It's a relay. Hmm. So you need to not take it. It's a relay. Why are we handing over to? Where am I going to be active more? Hmm. If you see at the same boat, the same boat is never the one that starts the race. The race. Hmm. The fastest man, the other take the third leg, the correct is, or the last leg, the correct is. Mm. So, you must need to look at where best suits you to play in the value chain of the, the business. The value chain starts from the finger production, the growth production, the sales, and marketing. Mm. So, you might decide, oh, this is my strength, I can canvas able to buy my product. Do I need to bulk myself in market production? <laughs> Let me meet those that are producing and buy at very good rates to okay. keep them in business. Mm. And to keep me in business. That is the difference between a market woman and, and, and a graduate exactly. that wants to get the business. Mm. Yeah, I will take the issue of power first. First of all, we discarded our farm from the national grid since the year 2014. Hmm. I actually wrote a letter to NEPTO, PSC, and then that they come and disconnect us officially. Because we were paying so much, we were not using power. 
So, and I said, okay, what can we do differently? I said, okay, how much are you running on our generator with diesel? When we had NEPA or PSN, we are running almost the same cost. So, and I said, okay, NEPA can go. Let us manage this cost. But we cannot run generator 24 7. So, we have to invest in solar system. So, that can actually, yes. If you finish our major operations on the big ten, I'll go to solar. I'll go to solar to run the office equipment. So, we're able to do that. On the cost of feed, there's nothing much you can do about it. Because when we try to do our own feed, we find out that we we're not efficient. And I'll tell you why. If you're going to do good quality feed, you must be able to invest in silos because if you are buying a kind of quality today and you're not buying in bulk, it changes the quality of your feed. So you are not consistent. Where compare yourself with the big companies, they can store 120 metric tons of maize, 60 metric tons of granite cake in their big silos, and they able to test one off and say, yes, this is the protein this is the quality we have. For us, we were spending more on testing evidence production was not consistent because what the supplier will bring this time because it's full of quantity sure. and that would be different. Difference. Exactly. So we ran at a loss. Mm. So we had to shut down that part and concentrated on buying feed directly. More expensive but we are getting better results. Mm. So that's okay. Now your feed cost is high. You cannot sell blood than the benchmark. So what else can you do? That was all better some of our marketing skills at that point in time. Can we sell directly to people? Because if you're able to sell 30-40% of your produce down to the table, which you call from farm to table, mm. then you're able to make enough profit to cover all the problem. And for us now, on the tilapia end of it, we are saying that yes, because you can you don't, you don't need to sell tilapia live. Mm, so sure. sell them fresh using ice, ice packs, frozen. So with that, we're able to get more market for that value chain of it. Now we're going to barbecue, which I think you, you start looking at. In terms of yes, there's nothing wrong in having barbecue grills yeah. every corner because if you're able to do very good quality barbecue grills, you're able to sell 10 15 fish a day. I think that That's money. is as profitable as it can be for you mm -hmm. on a daily basis. So, I think there's a lot to work around with when it comes to that issue. The advice I have for you is number one, you must have interest one. Then you must be able to go for trainings. Because like I told you the last time, this is the only industry that people don't do training and they want to make money. Mm. If you're going to go into tailoring, you will buy cabin biscuit and pay yes. yes. to give your guy because you are starting. And you are going to pay. To learn, they are going to pay in order to graduate. But in farming, people working, but they call themselves workers. Mm. They get trained free of charge. They leave your farm, go and start there. So, but for people that go direct, they say, okay, want to do training. Those ones have a better stead in knowing the rudiments of what they are going to do as compared to someone that is working and because he's seen some things, some things. But because 
if you come here for training, there's a module you follow. Hmm. You have like the curriculum based on your experience about the years. That curriculum is not something the workers know hmm. about. It's they are working. But you need to know the reason why you are doing this. So that's the difference. So people don't to, okay, I want to learn this thing. How much does it cost? But that's the most once you're able to learn very well, then it's a lot easier for you to determine the value chain you can play. Like I said, everything is not about money. You have that good will. Have you created that good will over the years in people? They can trust you for even their space. Because someone can say, oh, come and put up your barbecue stand there. The young man, you are respectful in this area. We see you as something truthful, you don't fight. So they are giving you they are giving you a space for free. That is that reduces your cost of entry to mm. the such market. Mm. And with the attitude with ah, let's go and buy it from this guy. He knows what he's doing because he has been trained. When I was about starting my barbecue grill, the fact that I can do barbecue, I went to Benin Republic to train for one week. I still went uh, last month for the Ramadan. And, uh, that was, uh, before Ramadan, I went to Benin Republic. I went to meet the man that taught me. He still gave me some tips again, just for coming to visit him. When I showed him what I was doing, and I said, oh, you shouldn't be doing this one like this again. See the method I'm using again. Because after training, he kept in touch had good rapport so you to just show me immediately what is doing new so those things come to play so it's not about money every time money comes into play but it should not be the first issue okay. the government does not need advice <laughs> the only thing that they are not focused on agriculture all the advice they need is in their books. People before us have been saying it. People after us will still say it. They don't put things in front of us. So it's not as if you give government advice. You give government advice every time. But they are not focused on agriculture. Because if the government at all levels doesn't understand that agriculture can take us to economic boom. When you still have issue of rent sharing, rent seeking from oil, from taxes, how do you tax someone that has nothing to be taxed? Hmm. Hmm. So, what are I need to give a government? I think what you need to do for farmers is simple: provide land for them. You don't have access to get money to buy land. Mm. So you have agreed reserves, agreed agreed areas, here mud for agriculture, estates, federal, right? So if you have such, what infrastructure is the government putting in place there? Mm. They have dedicated power supply. Mm. They have good roads there that can make them evacuate their produce. I gave, I want to mention the state. We had discussion with one of the states in the southwest a few years ago and I told them to get used to farming is the easiest thing we can do. What you need to do, you have farm settlements everywhere in your state. Bring in youths that are interested in farming irrespective of their cost. Mm. Don't bring youths because one other youth member has given you a yeah, name. Uh, yes, a name. Bring you that are serious, that are ready. Put them in that settlement. Provide dedicated power supply for them. Build a clinic for them. Let them have access to internet. To internet they are going to have in the town. Let them have access to mortg housing mortgages that they can own two to three bedroom flats. 
modern two bedroom flat in those farm settlements and you see that all you need for them that is keeping them out of the rural area is being put in place for them a grocery operator will come in into that settlement and start selling farm produce amongst them creating a chain for them from there you have a school so but what have you done first you have a settlement you brought in power for them government is not going to give you the mortgage the mortgage company will come and say yes you guys are doing well we look at your farm oh you can pay ten thousand on a monthly basis we give you this mortgage for 15 years so it creates value for the market to make money for producers to make money for bad so so you so that is is it's nothing it's not a new advice it's something they've been saying but unfortunately the government at all level they are not focused on agriculture as a key developmental index for us